the absolute value. So now you guys can see this absolute value is being multiplied by 2 and it's being added by 6. So first thing we always undo is addition and subtraction. So we subtract the 6 on both sides. So I have 2 times absolute value of 4x minus 1 is less than or equal to 14. Then I divide by 2. So I have absolute value of 4x minus 1 is less than or equal to 7. Do you guys see how process step number 1 worked? Yes? Treat that absolute value like it's a variable. Just undo everything that's happening to it. Now we have a less than or equal to. So by using step 2, I've got to create my two cases. And since it's less than or equal to, it's going to create an AND conjunction. So I do my first case, which is basically just the exact same inequality without the absolute value. Then it's an AND injunction. And then the other one, I have to make sure I negate my side. So I'm going to flip the inequality. Yes? Um, for number one, it says uh, that it is divided by a negative number, but it's positive. Oh, you mean like over here? Remember in the first example, this was a negative 2, right? So I had to divide by a negative 2 on both sides, right? That's why I flipped the sign up here. Over here, I'm just dividing by a positive 2, so I don't have to flip the sign. Now, when you get to your two cases, the same thing occurs. When you, over here, I'm going from 7 to negative 7, which is basically like dividing by a negative 1 or multiplying by a negative 1, right? So I have to make sure I flip the sign. Just if you can just remember when you create your two cases, whichever one you negate, meaning either make it the opposite sign, you're going to have to flip the sign. So one case, you're always going to have to flip the sign, basically. All right, so now we just go ahead and solve. So I add 1. So I have 4x is less than or equal to 8. Divide by 4. Divide by 4x is less than or equal to 2. Over here, I add 1, add 1. 4x is greater than or equal to negative 6. Divide by 4, divide by 4. x is greater than or equal to a negative 3 halves. All I did was I reduced the fraction. Yes? Uh, how come this one is an and and the other one was an or? Good question. So whenever you're doing a problem and you have a less than or a less, less than or equal to or a less than, it's an and conjunction. Whenever you're solving a problem and it's a greater than or greater than or equal to, it's an or. Okay, And that comes in after you've isolated the absolute value. Because if you remember, the absolute value we solved in the last problem started with the less than or equal to, right? But once I isolated the absolute value, it turned into a greater than or equal to. So that, only that, that works once your absolute value is isolated. All right, so now we just need to graph um, this line. I could graph it three times, but if you guys notice, it kind of took like a while, right? So I'm going to show you guys another way that's a little bit quicker, but still kind of goes through the same thing. So I'm going to want to cover 2 and negative 3 halves, which is roughly negative 1.5. So I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. OK, so again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to plot our two solution points. So we'll have 2 and negative 3 halves, which is like in between negative 1 and negative 2. We know that these are greater than or equal to, though, right? So they're going to be closed. They're included or less than or equal to. All right, so x is greater than or equal to negative 3 halves. Instead of graphing on the line, I'm just going to kind of go up and say that that's going to be all the values going to the right. For x is less than or equal to 2, instead of graphing on the line, I know that's going to be all the values going to the left. And this might be a better way to visualize. You guys can see that, yes? Well, we want them to intersect um, because that's what I'm trying to show you. Remember, an and is you're looking for the intersection. The solution is where they both are true, right? So that's why I want to show you is I want you to see that, hey, they only intersect between these two points. So that's going to be your solution. Because remember, if I said you and your parent come to open house, you and your parent come to open house, it's not true if just you come to open house or if just your parent comes to open house. It's only true when both of you come to open house. So remember, and we're looking for that intersection. OK? Anybody have any questions on that?